I'm not sure many, how many people in the room or in the audience have shot film or still shoot film, but when you shoot film, it slows you down. It has to because it costs you money. Every time you press the shutter button, you're spending money. You have to buy film and you have to get it developed. And so while you often hear people say that the look of film is what got me into shooting film, it's often the way in which film makes me shoot that it really inspires people. And what I found is that film starts to change the way that you approach your photography. The first thing you do is you stop looking at the back of your LCD because there isn't one. And so all of a sudden, you very quickly start to change your relationship with your camera. Your camera is not there to help you check your exposure and your camera is not there to help you see. You have to start doing that yourself. You have to start doing that before. And film is a very productive um, way of not being able to cheat around that. Um, the other thing is that film starts to slow you down in terms of your process. You start to be a lot more patient. You start to do things like find good light. I check the weather a lot more when I'm shooting on film because I want to know if it's going to be sunny or if it's going to be overcast because that's probably going to tell me whether I want to shoot black or white or colour. Um, and then even when you get into the moment and you find something that's interesting to shoot, you start to function with a lot more discipline because you've only got 36 exposures or, or less depending on your camera. And so you might say to yourself, all right, well, I only really want to make one photograph of this. So what do I want it to look like? And you start to work the scene and you start to think, okay, like, so in this photograph, do I want the, sub do I want the viewer to, to see this from a distance or do I want this, them to see this close up? You start to, to do the work of making your photograph without having to go click, nah, click, nah. And some people find this a really inspiring and fulfilling way of working. Um, essentially, people describe their photography as being a lot more intentional. Now, I want to press pause here for a second and say that you don't need to shoot film to do any of what I just said. You can shoot your digital cameras like that. All you have to do is turn your image review off and keep it off. And then you can set yourself challenges and say, all right, well, today I'm only going to make 10 photographs. I want to tell a story with 10 photographs. Or I'm going to go away this weekend and I'm only going to shoot what would be one roll. Like I'm going to shoot 36 frames. And see if you can keep yourself to that. And if it doesn't work for you, that's fine. But my experience with shooting in this way, particularly using film to shoot in this way, is that a couple of things happened. The first thing that happened is that I did start to get more keepers. I still made a lot of bad photographs that I didn't want to see ever again, but my percentage of keepers went up. The other thing that I noticed was that, and this is something that a lot of photographers will say, is that their photographs actually started to talk to one another in a more consistent way. Because, because you're no longer able to shoot as many images as you want, you start to be more intensive and more deliberate about what you're photographing and how, and you start to actually see a vision and a consistency in your own images develop. There's also another thing that happens which I think is very interesting, which is that you actually start to review your mistakes. And I feel the reason for that is because when you come back from a weekend of shooting with a digital camera, you've probably made 500 photographs. And the game then is, all right, I've got to sort through them, find the good ones, edit them, and there's so many mistakes, you don't have time to look at them. Whereas you have a roll of 36, even if you have, say, 10 photographs that you like, you have 26. And by the time that you get to the end of all those images, you've probably only clicked you know, through your screen about, for about five minutes. And so you've got plenty of time to double back and have a look. And when you have so few photographs, you start to ask the question, okay, so that photograph didn't work. Why? What didn't I like about it? Like, if I goof my exposure, was it my meter? Or was it me? If, the composition doesn't work. What is it about the composition that doesn't work? Did I need to be closer? Or should I have shot that at a, at a different aperture? Whatever it'll be. And I started to notice that I actually carry that thinking with me back into the field. And I've had numerous instances where I'm, I'm, I'm making a photograph and I remember, I'm like, no, I don't like the way this lens does that. I, I need to change my perspective. Or, I know that this is going to have too strong a shadow or whatever it'll be. So 
again, you know, you don't necessarily need to shoot film to do this. My experience is that film is a very productive restraint in this regard. And even though I've tried to carry some of that discipline of shooting film into my digital workflow, it's hard for me to keep it. That's just... Right. That's a re another really great point. When you shoot on film, you don't have metadata. You know, even when you get your scans,